first, and that came like after 8.30. Let me bring up Bookmap right now pretty briefly. We'll jump to that. We'll jump around a little bit towards Uber as well later on. I want to talk to you folks about Uber, what happened on the Uber trade from earlier today. And then from that point, maybe we'll jump back to Novavax if we have time. I'd like to, but we're going to at least talk about the moves that we caught from this morning here. So prior to that break above 2.55, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of volume out there initially, but you could see after 8.15 Eastern time, more of an orangish, yellowish line pops up right there. It's actually like a 2.56. It represents about 15,000 shares on the ask. That wasn't there prior to 8.15 Eastern time. So that really was the strong level at that point. That wasn't as big of a level until we saw a 15,000 share order pop up on the ask. And hey, if that stock could blast over that price and break through that level, then you should look to jump into that position at that point. So it led to a great pop in entry at that time. It's easy to say in hindsight, but this is what we talk about and, and go through every week here in Traders Talk, right? It is, it is all about finding your big levels first. And then waiting for the stock to break through a, that big level or one of your big levels going up, right? So you could talk about that from 225 and then from there 255 or 256, I should say. And it popped up from that point. Well, hey, going into the market open, let's see what happened to this trade because, you know, hey, after it broke above this resistance, it moved up well. Uh, normally after 9 o'clock, especially like 9, 10, 9, 15, you should absolutely absolutely be out of your pre-market trades at that point. So I ended up nabbing a few cents on this stock. I got out shortly after 9 o'clock as it was beginning to make that little pullback. So you now I was able to grab 7 cents on it. It's a cushion. I'm happy with the 7 cents. Not a home run, but... I don't trade pre-market as often, right? There's a bunch of us that live and die here by pre-market, and, and that's perfect. I'm just not one of those you know, traders. So for myself, hell, seven cents, that's seven cents I didn't have to begin the morning. So I'll take that gladly, right? So you know that, that's a nice start. Now at this point though, let's see what happened because it ended up beginning to kind of hold around here, right? We had a big iceberg water pop up on the bid at 250. So the more this ends up teasing resistance here, it should look to make the pop. But at this point, you still want to wait because you're getting closer and closer to 930. You want to give it a little bit of time there, at least at first, and then you'll react accordingly to see what happens. What I mean by that is, well, the market opened up and within the first minute and a half, two minutes, well, it ended up beginning to make a stronger move. It ended up beginning to hold right off the opening print at 272. Right here. And then it ended up breaking higher. Broke above pre-market highs again. Broke above you know, resistance at that point, And led to a nice squeeze up initially up towards 3. But here, and this is where I ended up just jumping back in on this trade later on. So I, missed, I, I personally missed the initial pop here. But... The more that this ends up needling resistance, breaking above three, testing resistance, I'm looking for that pop. So that shortly came here, just going into 10 o'clock Eastern. It was beginning to bounce back up. I wanted to take the trade even from right around 294, 293-ish, but I, I was like, fly, you don't want to fly too close to the sun, you know, enter right under resistance at three. I'm still respecting the whole number. Um, it would have worked out on this trade, but I personally waited for this to break above three and I jumped in very quickly from that point. Um, it was already breaking above three, a couple of instances here. So with the buying interest that you had when it breaks over three, if it's not going to do it here, then I'm led to believe it's not going to do it at all. So I jumped in, I set a very tight stop underneath me. It was right below the peaks here at the time. And it fortunately led to a nice little move at the time. I ended up getting out too late even. It ended up pulling back and I was only able to grab another seven cents on this trade, I believe. I was in right from 301, got out right at 308. But on this one, with it beginning to make a new high, I'm looking for the, the real home run at this stage. It's at this point now, I'm looking for a really big move. I mean, it doesn't seem to be that big of a resistance up until 320, 330, uh, you know, maybe ahead 350, yeah, 
But it seems like three was the bigger level. Orange line there. Yellow line here. It broke above it. So I was led to believe with the entry I took then, let's go. We should see a home run here. You know, I'm not looking for a dollar. I'm not trying to make the perfect trade, but I'm trying to, you know, get my day's pay perhaps on this one, on, on this one stock. You know, at least on a thousand shares, you could walk out with like a few hundred bucks on this trade should the stars align. Now that's the, that's the kicker though. That's always the, the condition if the stars align. So as much as I was led to believe the stars would align, and for this to really rip upward, listen, it's a new IPO. It doesn't have a whole lot of historical data. Uh, it came out with good news this morning. It's not just some rando uh, short squeeze off of no news. Uh, I think some good like news came out on this stock, I think in relation to the U.S. Navy getting some government contract you know, in the morning meeting, I did say we didn't know the terms and conditions of said deal. I said it wasn't disclosed. You know, you don't know how much money, but news that came out, I'm sure that, you know, the more this breaks out and pops resistance, more eyeballs could be on this trade and they could really run it up. Why not think that? So especially with it breaking above three after the open, I, I jumped in. It was a slick entry. But I didn't get what I wanted. I wanted this to break above 320 at least and keep going from that point. And once this started to really pull back, I said, oh, shoot, this is not making the move I wanted to make. I, I very quickly got out right off of 308. I was fortunate to at least get out where I did. If it's not going to make that big move that you're looking for, I mean, hey, it can make that big move you're looking for. In 10 minutes from now, 15 minutes from now, it's possible. But if it's not going to make that big move you're looking for, and there's always, there's a big possibility you're not going to get that big move at all. And otherwise, if it's not going to continue it even here. I was on a coaching call with one of our students earlier going over this trade. And I didn't take this where my cursor is. But if someone had jumped in right there, they're following the rules. And if there's no real resistance until that 320, they're... A great opportunity. But if it's not going to make that big move that you know this stock has the chance to make, you know, I said it to my student Scott earlier on our coaching call, one on one. I'll say it to you folks, um, you know, just philosophy. But seeing a stock hold over a big level, like, like this did over three, well, that, that's fine and dandy. You know, that, that's nice. But that doesn't make us money. Become a Cyber Group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.